Beginning at Mount Paflagone in Irpinia, the River Sele descends some 64 kilometers before crossing a fertile alluvial plain known as the Sele Plain. The shoreline from Salerno to Agropoli is one of the Mediterranean's most beautiful and runs for some 40 kilometers along the ridge of the plain. From the 8th century BC, southern Etruscan communities settled around Ponte Cagnano Faiano, which has been an independent municipality since 1911. Their remains are now housed in the National Archaeological Museum Ietruschi di Frontiera, with funereal furnishings from royal burial sites, including vases, jewellery and necklaces of refined oriental manufacture. A few kilometers away, we find the busy, dynamic Bilizzi, another independent municipality since 1990. The symbol of Batipaglia is the Castelluccio, an 11th century manor which belonged to Mensa, Archbishop of Salerno. In the 13th century, it came into the hands of Marcantonio Doria, then of the Colonna family, and finally to Pignatelli of Strongoli. At the beginning of the 20th century, the architect Farinelli rebuilt it in new medieval style. Nearby, in the countryside, we find farms and country manors, remains of the ancient identity of Batipaglia. San Mattia was originally a monastery and is a true gem of rural architecture. The ancient center of Eboli is dominated by the bell tower of San Pietro alle Marmi and the impressive Colonna Castle. The abbey was built in 1159 at the time of William the Norman. In the vast rooms of the National Archaeological Museum of Eboli and the Media Valley del Sele, we find remains from the Copper Age, Gaudo civilization and numerous funereal furnishings of indigenous cultures. Further down, the Serre Persano municipality is overlooked by the Royal Bourbon Hunting Lodge, built in 1752. First Charles III, then his son Ferdinando IV dabbled in their common passion for hunting and horse raising. Today those ten miles of woods, which once hosted the royal hunting sessions, are almost entirely taken up by the charming natural oasis of the World Wildlife Fund. As we descend towards the great beaches of the coast, we find modern buffalo farms bordered by fragrant pine woods and ancient eucalyptus trees. Buffaloes have been here for a long time, first imported by the Normans and introduced into Sicily by the Arabs. The technique of mozzarella making has remained unchanged for centuries. The buffalo milk is mixed with rennet, the dough is threaded and finally mozzata by hand which means pinched between the thumb and index finger. The artichoke, or in Arabic, karsuf, is a healthy vegetable with therapeutic qualities and has been highly regarded since the 16th century 
as a delicacy for aristocratic and royal tables. Today, in the plain, it is a cash crop and is one of the finest products of local agriculture. Soft mozzarella cheese and the therapeutic artichoke are shining symbols of the Mediterranean diet. But the queen, the universally renowned queen of the table, is the pizza. Leo Longanesi once described it as a monument to art, a monument which requires the commitment of an inspired and talented artist, the pizza maker. Have you ever watched a pizza maker at work? Have you watched his hands? They move precisely and swiftly around the dough, which is laid out, spread, pulled and pinched at the edges. It is rounded like the moon, then filled with genuine ingredients, first with tomatoes and mozzarella, then is cooked for a few minutes in a wood-burning oven. Finally, Her Majesty the Pizza is served, such a treat for the eyes and the palate. Our journey continues to some of the most ancient and charming locations in European culture. A brilliant young Neapolitan archaeologist, Paola Zancani Montuoro and Umberto Zanotti Bianco, brought to light the Heraion of Foce Sele. The first remains of the ancient sanctuary from the 6th century came to light on the 9th of April 1934, along with the carved mitope a sculpture painting, one of the most important in Western Greek culture. Here, in these fertile lands, the Greeks of Sibiri founded Posidonia. Three temples stood in the holy area of the town, protected by cyclopic walls. Their remnants astounded the travelers of the 18th century, from Soufflo to Winchelmann, who came here in 1758. These temples still radiate their primitive, solid solemnity and austere beauty, isolated in the plain amidst the grassy fields and the blooming pink oleanders. Priceless remains from the Greek, Lucanian and Roman ages are on display in the National Archaeological Museum of Pestum, the Metope of Heraion, the richly decorated vases, the tombs which tell of melancholy ritual descents down to the underworld in sophisticated allegories of death. In the most famous tomb of the diver, two young men play kotabos, throwing a banquet cup behind them, while not far away, a young athlete is diving from a springboard into the clear blue sea. Perhaps to these Greeks, the descendants of the Sybarites, life was a mysterious adventure, which was as beautiful and fragile as a game. Unspoiled beaches, bays and Mediterranean vegetation, which climbs on hills and mountains, gently leading down to the sea. This is the landscape of Chilento, a land of incomparable beauty, of bittersweet perfumes, where aromatic wines and velvety oils can delight the palate. Aeneas helmsman Palinuro allowed himself to fall into the water of its magic sea, enchanted by the stars shining in the Chilento skies.